when you work with a, a deaf person, they get, it gets frustrating after a while, you know, to some people. And, and you get tired of it, and you just start kind of taking advantage of it, you know, and you just, yeah, 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 sure, sure. You don't listen to them, and you don't communicate with them. I think he, he wears on the nerves of the other guy, just like he does me, you know, on a given day or on occasion. And they'll get even for that. They'll, they'll rig up something on his bike that doesn't work. I'm not sure why they tease Rocky. It's just, uh, he's a, a happy-go-lucky type of guy. Because he's deaf. Absolutely. You know, he's, I think he's afraid that he's missing out. And uh, he's a pain in the butt in those cases. No question about it. You're boring. I do nothing. <laughs> Why not me? I point that you. way. I point that way. I can help Okay, what else, man? Why don't you shave? Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm over here. You got a good start on being a bum, I'll tell you that. <laughs> It's obvious that he's he's picked on more than anyone else in the shop, you know. Uh, people hide things from him, and he gets on other people about, you know, problems they have, maybe not a handicap, but whether they be personal problems or whatever, you know. He, he gets pretty even. I think sometimes it hurts him, because sometimes he doesn't know the intention of what you mean. They always tease me. They always tease me. Again and again and again. Sometimes I get a little fed up with it. I don't like being teased, but I can handle it once in a while. You know, sometimes they like to tease me until I lose my temper to see how long it takes for me to get mad. They think, oh, he's deaf. And they start picking on me to see if I get upset or scared. Then when I lose my temper, they start mocking me. Sometimes I might yell at them. They want to hear my voice. They like to see my anger. It doesn't bother him, but it bothers me because I can hear it. I don't worry too much about the teasing. All I really want to be is number one, because I know someday I will be number one. But if they tease me or whatever, and I get angry, I might lose my job and I'll never be able to prove myself. So I just ignore them and let them have their fun. I'll keep getting better and keep working harder and harder, no matter how much they tease me. I don't know, unless you... Want to come Yeah. Rocky has a real desire to win. He, uh... You know, he wants to prove to everybody that... That he can do it, you know? He wants to prove to himself that he can be... You know, a number one mechanic. That being deaf isn't going to hold him back from doing anything. He's going to do it anyway. Winning is very important to me. But winning makes everybody feel good. It makes me feel good, makes the writer feel good, and makes the company feel good. But the other employees go, look at Rocky, he's winning again. He's just lucky. They're always telling me I'm just lucky. And I say, no, I'm trying to work hard to win. I'm not just lucky. And they just laugh it off and tell me it's luck. But really, last year, Galen and I had six wins. How can that be luck? One win, yeah, but six wins can't be luck. There has to be some skill there. He wants to be a mechanic for a national champion. You know, he, Rocky's always saying, you know, I want to be a, I want to be a national champion. And what he means is he wants to wrench for a national champion. And uh, he sees that slipping away all the time. You know, he's had, he's been with Galen for a long time, and then Galen got hurt. And this year, there's no chance for that. You know, last year Galen got hurt, and there's no chance for that. You know, there's no doubt about it. I was getting real close in the point standings for number one. You know, the championship. And I broke my leg. And it's, it's hard to get it back. You know, you're off a year and you try to come back and the competition's get harder and you're slower and you got to work right back up to it. It makes it hard. And I kind of look at Rocky and say, well, you know, he can do it death and I can overcome a broken leg and, and get back on top. So we're just kind of working together to do it. Here I've tried to paint Available. If I was looking for a mechanic, if he was the best mechanic, you know, met the qualifications better than the other available choices, okay. he wouldn't have to be very much better for me to take him, you know, over a guy who could hear. Because you're really looking for the qualifications. A lot of times when I think about Rocky and think about, you know, having him here versus not having him here, it'd be easier not to have him here. I mean, I'd be, I'd be lying if I said any other, anything else. But 
when you look at how easy it would be for us versus how difficult it is for him in life every day, you know, we, you know, maybe we're paying our dues. I don't know. I, I've thought about that a lot, and you and I talked about that. But maybe we're paying our dues. But I, I think it's the least we can do for Rocky, because you know, Rocky's having a hard time. And it'd be easier here without him, for sure. I would have another mechanic in his place who may have five or six bad habits, or one other bad habit that's worse than any one Rocky might have. Everybody's an individual, and you have to learn to deal with each one. And uh, it'd be easier without Rocky here, I think. But I don't think that the fact that Rocky's here makes it that much tougher on us. I think it's good for us in some ways. It teaches us a lot. I think some of the things that I've learned about people working with Rocky is to be more appreciative of, of just uh, people in general. Uh, People say certain people are ugly or some people are handicapped for this reason or for that reason, but you know, everybody's a human being and they should be all treated the same. And I, I think uh, that people sometimes are too critical of other people and you know, don't take a good look at themselves once in a while. You know? I think I've learned a lot about that by myself. For sure, I've learned a lot from Rocky you know, just since I started here. And I think all the mechanics learn a lot from him. I think I think the mechanics, when they get mad at him on a given day and they spout off or tease him or say something that makes him mad or just flat get even with him, I think they're sorry for it. And as long as, the short time that I've been here, I've seen them, their temperament get a little milder and I think he's showing them or teaching them how to get along with people a little easier. There's a lot of times when I'd just say something to him if he wasn't deaf, that now I don't say because he is deaf. I'll, I'll take a second thought and I'll think of a better way to put it to him or I'll think of how to construct my as I talk to him he lip reads so I'll think of a way to say it in fewer words more concise more popular words that's patience when you take the time to do that he's taught me a lot of patience well the things that I try to overcome I try not to give up I know I have to hang in there and keep fighting I don't want to quit I've been fighting for so long that I can't stop now I'll probably keep fighting until I die that's all I want to do. If I don't fight, then I'll just stay in the same old grind. And I don't want to do that. I always want to improve, not get worse, so I can get to the top. People tease me and say that I can't be number one or that I'll always stay the same. They've said it for a long time. I know people will always say that I can't do it because I'm deaf or whatever. So I just have to keep going and continue fighting until I die. And I know that one day in the future, I'll get my reward. If you'll notice.